As a continuation to the previous video, we're going to take a look at a practical example on how to use barriers in uh, multi-threading. So hopefully you're going to understand what they are used for and how you can use them in which situations. Now, the problem is very, very simple. We're going to have eight threads and all eight threads, all they're going to do is roll a dice. And inside our main thread, the main thread is going to check which one uh, which thread won and which thread lost, basically. And uh, if we have multiple winners, say two threads roll six uh, in the same round, then uh, both of them are going to be winners. So no tiebreaker, no nothing. So to get started implementing this, uh, I would start by defining here a simple macro saying the number of threads, which I'm going to set to eight. So I'm going to create eight threads. I have eight cores on my CPU. That's probably a nice number, but you can choose whatever number you want. And then we're going to have a, an array here. It says the dice values of eight. So that's basically where we're going to store what each thread has um, rolled. And then I want another array that says the status. The status is something that we're going to set uh, in the main thread, which is going to denote whether or not the thread won or lost. So that's going to be zero by default. Now let's create first the routine that all the threads are going to execute. So I'm going to have here a void pointer. Let's say roll, roll dice. And then it's going to take some arguments. And what I'm going to do here is well, I'm going to call srand to see the random number generation. And I have also included time.h, so that's also there. So we're going to pass like we did before in the arguments. We're going to pass the index. That's very straightforward, I think. We're just going to dereference args, but we're going to also have to cast it to an int pointer. Otherwise, it's not going to know what to do with it. And then we're going to roll the dice. I'm going to say dice, dice values of index equals, um, I'm going to call a rand and say percent six, but remember this only returns numbers from zero to five. So I'm going to add another one so that we get numbers from one through six inclusive. Okay. And really all else I want to do is just say, uh, check the status. So I want to say if status of index is one, that means that we won. So I'm going to say print F, and let's, uh, let's say I want a more specific message where I have for the index rolled. So here's going to be the thread index and then the rolled is going to be the actual dice roll. So we see it on the screen and then it's going to say, uh, because it's one, it's going to say I won. And then a backslash N. And here I'm going to give it, um, the dice values of index and no, wait, the index and then the dice values of index, right? So the first one is going to be our thread index and the second one is going to be our uh, actual value that we rolled. And then similarly on the else route, that means that we lost. So I'm just going to say I lost, that's it. Okay, so that's more or less what we have here. Now let's create a thread. Since you've seen uh, me create this code already a couple of times, I'm going to fast forward through it. And there we go. That's uh, how we did it. I used the thread num macro in, in place of just the uh, hard coded number so we can change it later on. Now in between the create and join, what I want to do is to also calculate the status, right? Because once created a thread, I want to calculate the status so that um, I can set from the main thread who actually won. To do so, first we're going to iterate over the dice values and get a maximum. So I'm going to say here int max because it's not necessary to roll a six to win. You could win with a five, right? So I'm going to have to check which is it, which is the max value. So I'm going to say max is zero and uh, four i equals zero i less than uh, it's still thread num i plus plus and if dice values of i is higher than our current max then max equals dice 
I use a Y, just like that. And then after we've uh, calculated the max, then we can just say if dice values of I is the max, then it means that you're a winner. So I'm going to say status, not static, status of I equals one, otherwise status of I equals zero. This could be optimized a little bit, but no worries. I want it to be more explicit. And one more thing we need to add is to pthread create so that we have an, uh, an index so that each thread knows which index it is. So I'm going to say here int a or int pointer a malloc of size of int and add the address of a save i so that we can send it forward. And once we're done with this a, remember this one is dynamically allocated, we should actually free it here in roll dice. So I'm going to say free of args. All right, now if we try to launch this, what do we get? If we launch this, you'll notice something very peculiar. You see, we have all eight threads uh, sending a message, but all of them say they lost. There's no way all of them lost the game, right? Because one of them should have been at least the winner, right? And we can see that here we have three sixes, right? So these three threads rolled a six, therefore should have said that they won. What's going on here? What's, what's the issue actually? The issue is actually very straightforward. Uh, because we're in a multi-threaded environment, certain things are not guaranteed to be executed after other things. For instance, this if statement is actually very crucial that it uh, executes after the main thread has actually calculated the status, right? Like if you just take a look at the status before the main thread calculated whether you lost or won, of course, we're going to just print out I lost every single time because remember this status array is initialized with zeros all the way through. And because of that, uh, this is most likely what happens here that all threads are executing this code uh, up to the free statement and then the main thread comes along and calculates whether uh, they won or not. So this is quite complicated to synchronize, right? This, is, this feels like kind of uh, difficult to do. What do we use here? We can't really use a mutex because we can have, we can have multiple lines executing at the same time. We just need to, we just need them to execute after a certain uh, condition has been met. Now the answer is very straightforward and of course is barriers. So we're gonna create here one barrier up top and say pthread, pthread, um, thread barrier underscore t and I'm gonna call it barrier rolled dice. Right. Uh, and what is this barrier is gonna do is it's gonna stop the execution of all threads until all threads have rolled the dice, right? That is because once we know that all threads roll the dice, then the main thread can calculate and only then. So in this case, we're gonna have, uh, and I'm gonna also initialize this pthread barrier object, so barrier init, uh, passing the address of the barrier, no, we're gonna leave it all default. Now the count here is actually very important. Um, our barrier should wait not only for all the eight threads that we have created, but also for the main thread, because uh, only once all the eight threads have uh, finished its execution, only then I want the main thread to actually execute, right? And the main thread is separate from all the other ones, but it's still a thread, okay? So we're gonna add here as a count thread num plus one. And of course, I'm gonna p thread barrier destroy, destroy our barrier here at the end so that we don't forget. Now, how do we wait for this barrier? Well, since it's the barrier roll dice, we're gonna wait on it after we've rolled the dice. So p thread barrier wait on this barrier rolled dice. That's That should be straightforward. But for the main thread, I want it before it uh, doing any of the calculations here, right here we actually, what, we calculate the winner. Before calculating the winner, I want 
uh, the main thread to wait until all of the other threads have rolled the dice, right? So therefore we're gonna actually just call the pitted barrier wait on this right before calculating it. Now, when we execute this code, it's guaranteed that we're gonna have an actual value. Let's try this. Let's try this code and see what happens. So if I try to launch this, well, you might notice that now it actually works. We have thread seven, roll the six and one because no other thread has rolled the six. So he's the only winner. And if we try to execute it a couple more times, we're gonna see that it actually does work. But there is one more caveat to this uh, whole thing. Right, so there was an issue, of course, where we had to wait for this thread. So this, this main thread had to wait for the dice to be rolled, right? But there's another dependency and that is the status. There's no guarantee that this if is executed anywhere before it's being set. So in some cases, this check here for the status might, might be executed before the, the thread, the main thread actually restarts executing. Okay, so th there's another issue with synchronization. And right now I couldn't get it to work because it is actually much more tricky sometimes. It uh, is probably much more, much, much less likely than the other problem to occur, but it can occur. So when these things can occur, you're gonna have to add another probably another barrier. In this case, we can add another barrier up top here. Let's say, uh, let's call it calculated because it calculated the winner. That's the barrier for calculation for the winner. I'm gonna initialize it. So I'm gonna copy and paste this, just say calculated and still it's gonna be a thread num plus one, of course. And of course, we're gonna also call pthread barrier destroy for our barrier that we just created. And in the main thread, I'm gonna wait on it after we've calculated everything. So after we've calculated everything like this, we're gonna wait on this barrier. That's gonna raise the count to one, but we need nine, right? We have here thread num plus one. So we're gonna have to wait on this barrier as well inside these, uh, these threads that we've created. So where do we wait for that? Well, right before our status, which happens to be right after our rolled dice barrier. So we're gonna wait for two barriers in this case. And now it's guaranteed that all the time, this if statement is gonna be executed after all the threads, including the main thread has uh, passed this barrier. And the main thread only passes this barrier after it finished the execution of uh, calculating the winner, right? So we know that the status is set. Now, if we try to launch this, well, we're not gonna see much of a difference. Still, it's gonna be probably the same as before because before we couldn't get it to not work. Okay, you might ask, sure, but can't you just implement all this with just uh, a simple roll of the dice and then execute all this calculation after we've joined all the threads? Of course we could, yes, this would, would work. But, but this is uh, really for synchronization when all the threads are still running. So consider this, consider if the game keeps on playing, right? So if we have a while loop in every single thread, let's say here, let's say a while loop, while of one, we don't even finish it ever like that. And we indent all this. And then we have a while loop on the main thread as well. So we have a while of one and just like so. And we're also gonna sleep one second so that it doesn't go too fast. Now, if I try to launch this, you'll notice that every time, every second, we're gonna see six or eight messages on the screen corresponding to all eight threads. And it's going to be correct without actually 
having to wait for each set to terminate. Actually, for it to be more exact, I'm gonna also add a, a message here, to say right, right before the sleep that says new round started, so that we can see properly where a new round starts. And if I launch this, we should get eight messages in every round here. And uh, if I stop the execution of it, you will notice that every eight of them are going to be calculated and a winner or more will be chosen using this uh, algorithm. And as you can see, they are not all synchronized. Like they're not uh, in sequence, they're not sequential, they are actually in parallel and they continue running forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Right? With the Peter join thingy, you couldn't do that. Right? You are synchronizing with the barrier, you're actually synchronizing the threads while they are running. It's the same thing with the mutex, but for mutexes, that's a bit of a different story. That's usually for uh, shared memory access. This is for actual code synchronization. This is what barriers are for. All right, that's about it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you do have any questions, leave them down comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code for all this will be, f will be found on uh, our website. Link in the description below. All right, take care. Bye.